doing pretty well to snap it with 20 pound, I would imagine. Oh, and we're on. Oh, how's that for timing? This is going to be a good snapper. Oh, oh, come on. Hopefully I can land this one. Oh, no, the reel just shit itself. Start of winding backwards. Man, I've been railed by some thumpers. Lost a heap of big ones, but caught, caught a fair few big ones too. Just with the ones that can land, it makes you wonder how big those ones are that get away. Got it pretty good, eh? G'day guys, just out today, going to have a quick little flick for some snappers. Um, sorry if the sound's a bit dodgy today, I've forgot to charge my microphone system up, so um, I'll just do the best with what I've got. The plan is today, we're just going to work these washing areas, um, anywhere there's a bit of foam coming off the point, we're just going to flick a few plastics into there. The water's a little bit dirty, so we're probably going to use a nuclear chicken or a tiger lime. Um, I'll give you a look at them and what weights we're going to use. Pretty warm at the moment, the water, it's sitting at 22.6 degrees. We've had a little warm push of current come in. There's a lot of bait and stuff around in the boat, so uh, pretty late in the day. It's about 11 o'clock now. We're just starting our day out, so um, we'll see how we go. There's a little bit of swell and chops still around from that low offshore. Um, had a quick little surf this morning. There were heaps of garfish running around in the water where I was surfing, so... Um, yeah, we'll see what happens, they see how we go today. First lure we're going to be using today is a 5 inch Crazy Legs Jerk Shad in Lime Tiger. We're going to run that on a quarter ounce jig head with a 1 0 hook. The 1 0 hook probably is slightly small for these 5 inch plastics. Um, 2 0 is probably better, you sort of want your hook to come out about one third down from the head. General rule of thumb, you can get your hook to come out there. You generally get a pretty good hook up rate when you're um, fishing, no matter what size plastic you're using. So there's our plastic all rigged up, ready to go. I would probably prefer that hook to be coming out about there. You can just see the length of the plastic. Um, if it was a little bit further back, we'll probably get a better hook up rate. Um, hook size really det is determined by the length and size of your plastic. The actual weight of the jig you're using is determined by wind, current and depth of water. Um, so I've got a quarter ounce there. We're in about 35 foot of water. Um, there's not a lot of wind. There's a bit of water movement just because of the swell that's around, but we'll get a couple of casts in and see what happens. But once you've got it down to the bottom, it's just a matter of just tweaking it up off the bottom. I always like to use like a double flick, so it's like flick, flick, wind, as you drop your rod tip back down just to keep the Get lure suspended without it dropping straight down. Tomatoes, and then just have your pause. I find snack. it particularly Great effective. With $3 um, a punnet at Woolworths. On sale until March 22, while stock class may not be available in all stores or online. We've gone away from the watermelon pearl today just because of the colour of the water, but um, doesn't mean it won't work. We still will try some watermelon pearls in a little bit. I'll just give this a go first. Have a quick little go here. I don't normally fish here. I just thought I'd give it a quick go because there was a bit of wash on the um, surface. I normally just duck around that next point. It's just a little bit more protected from these southerly swells. Um, we're probably probably about an hour away from high tide now. It's pretty full. Um, three days after the full moon, I'm pretty sure. Three or four days. I'll correct that with some writing or something. So you can see this foam here that I'm trying to fish under. Alright guys, we'll just get up our next plastic ready to go. You can see that hook is actually set a little bit deeper into the plastic that's a bit more ideal you know there's a little bit too much hook coming out before even if you can get it probably another three or four mil lower than that um, 
Yeah, it'll just hide that hook a bit more. When the fish bite down on it, you're still going to get a really good hook up rate. They'll tear that plastic to shreds in no time, but it'll hide that hook a little bit more. You'll get a few more bites. We've been here in this calm, quiet little corner for a little while now. We haven't caught any good fish. Caught that one little snapper. Um, there was a few of them around. I was getting, been getting a few little hits, a few little fish, nothing spectacular. Just going to go out around the corner, head back south. And um, it's going to be a little bit rougher and a bit bumpier around there, but hopefully we get a few more fish. Come back to you when we get there. We've just got to our next spot. We're just going to have a quick go for some snaps, put some plastics back around here. You can see these star marks here. That's that little section of reef that I'm trying to fish. It's um, generally pretty good fishing here. I do like this spot. This is my new go-to spot rather than where we were before. Um, see how we go. Water's a bit dirty. Not too much on the sounder, but it's a soupy roofy bottom here. Um, lumps and bumps all over it. Still running the um, watermelon pearl. I'll go back to that tiger lime soon and I'll get a slightly bigger jig head and see how we go with this to start with. Gonna go back to the tiger lime. Just gearing up my other rod. So now running a still a quarter ounce jig head, but just in a 2-0 for a slightly longer hook. That'll put the hook back in the about a one third mark from the head again. Um, that's generally where the fish and bait get hit by the bigger predators. And um, yeah, if you can have the point of your hook coming out in that spot, you can only increase your chances. There, give that a go. What I'll do is I set the second rod up just to give me a little bit extra cast distance and cast a little bit further than the other rod. But also allows me to have that one in the water fishing away while I'm gearing this one up instead of just replacing the jig head on that one and not actually fishing while I'm changing lures. Confident. And I'll probably get an extra three or four meters out of this rod compared to that one. We've tried the um, watermelon pearl. We caught one little fish on the tiger lime earlier, so we'll go back to that. Haven't had a lot of luck with the watermelon pearl. Few signs starting to cross, come across that sander now. As you can see, we're sort of drifting back in towards those marks there. Um, realistically, I would have wanted to be you now another 50 meters over this way, drifting in through there. But like I said, a few bit of bait and a few marks coming across the sander. You can see the reef there, some nice looking bit of reef. So a few people have asked me about my rods. So this one's a Shimano Diluna in a 8.6 light rated to it's got a lure weight of 5 to 25 grams and a PE 0.4 to 1.2 so I'm running 10 pound on there um, you could definitely go heavier than that I reckon you could run 20 pound on that rod no worries at all um, you'd be doing pretty well to snap it with 20 pound, I would imagine. Oh, and we're on. Oh, how's that for timing? This is going to be a good snapper. Oh, oh, come on. Hopefully I can land this one. Oh, no, the reel's going to shit itself. Started winding backwards. Oh. <laughs> Uh, of all the times, hey? Might just try and back this drag off just a little bit. It's got a pretty tight drag. Not ideal with the reel spinning backwards. This fish doesn't even really know he's hooked yet, I don't think. It's going to be a quality fish. That was a good, good little bit of timing. <laughs> Giving you a little rundown on the rod. Um, this reels cactus. I knew it was. I was having a few dramas with it. That's why I put it in the retirement home. Ah. I just uh, dug it out again because I thought oh, I'll give it a give it another go. But I now remember why I put it put it out for retirement. Oh bugger. 
It pretty much just winds backwards every time I let go of the reel. Maybe I need to stop the reel in a certain spot. Or... Hey, nice little fish. Oh, where's the net? So there's our first good snaps for the morning. Better get a shot of him in case he gets away. Looks like he's pinned pretty well. There he is there. You can see the little tiger lime just pinned beautifully in the corner of his mouth. He's never getting away, that fella. We'll give him a bit of a measure. Not a monster fish, he's probably oh, nearly that two kilo mark. 6.47, we'll give him a 47. There he is there. Sorry, he's 47 centimetres. I forgot, I haven't got my microphone on, but beautiful little fish. Uh, perfect eating size. Hook the stick straight out. Whoa. Get a good shot of him. Beautiful spots, beautiful colours. Perfectly healthy. He'll swim away, no worries at all. When the plastic hits the little keeper, that's the time to pull the point through the plastic. And I find that with these two tees, pretty much just lines everything up perfect for you. You know, you might be able to tear it just a little tiny bit just to get it exactly the way you want it. But that will be swimming pretty well. Really probably doing too much talking. I should be trying to get another cast back in as soon as possible. So the second spot we're fishing in, it's a little bit deeper than the first spot. We're sitting in about 68 foot. So I'm doing like a 30 second count to make sure my plastic's getting down there. Still using the quarter ounce. All right, we're on again. Not sure if this is gonna be a, oh yeah, it feels like a little snaps. Not quite the same size as the last one. We actually sort of had him on twice. We had him on once and then he sort of spat the hook. Oh, look at that. What is he? Little Trevally. We'll just lift him up in the boat. He should be fine to lift in. Just got the tiger lime in the corner of his mouth there. Easy to get that one out without hurting the fish. There he is there. Beautiful little Trevally. We'll send him on his way. There he goes. Another little... Oh, I think I missed him. Oh no, got him. Not sure what this is going to be, maybe another Trevally. Is that a camera happening? The success oh, I'll probably just turn that one off now, mate. I have to it. The dance floor. Turn it back on. He might be another little snap. This one. Not a, not a monster fish, but another nice little snap. It'd be legal, I reckon. Just feeling by the bobs. Hasn't gone too hard. Have a look and see what we caught here. Oh, a bit of colour there. Another Trevally. No, little snaps. Almost be legal fish if you. Oh, he's hooked pretty well. We'll just lift him on board, I reckon. Our yeah, second little. Oh, he might be just pushing legal that one. We'll give him a measure. All our fish have been caught on the tiger lime, like I said right at the start, you know, with the dirtier water. One of those brighter colours is probably going to be the go. Ooh, 33 centimetre flathead. Another glass little look, we'll send him on his way. There he goes. No problems at all. 
perfect little release. All right, we're just going to change over to one of these blue plastics with the flecks of sparkle in there. Sapphire shine, five inch crazy legs and a jerk shad. Um, see how we go. Like I said, that blue, blue colours and those lighter colours, lot blues and purples and greens. Um, those cooler sort of colours, the light will penetrate the water better and they'll stand out a little bit more in deeper water. So we'll see how we go. We'll put the theory into practice. That's on there pretty well. The one thing about the gulps, you've got to keep them upright. Hey? You can't let that liquid drain out of the bag or they'll dry out. So, yeah, keep them in those little satchels and keep them sitting upright so you don't lose that liquid. Oh, just that little bit slow. I wonder if I should have a cast out. And we're sort of just the other side of my marks. We're a little bit north of them now. So I'm just going to turn around, have a cast out the other side of the boat. Wind sort of straight east now. So it doesn't really matter. I'm casting across the wind as it is. Only thing is, out this side, the current will be pulling it away from the boat. Um, it's not generally what I teach people to do or suggest for people to do. Always cast up and let the current bring the plastic back to the boat. But we'll just mix it up. Can't hurt to give it a bit of a go. But what I do, if I do something like this, I leave the bay alarm open for a little while and just allow that plastic to sink down for a little ways before it gets any weight put on it. Um, just helps it get to the bottom and stay on the bottom for that little bit longer. Oh, I think we're going to get one here. All right, we're on. Another snapper. See, so it just show, goes to show that casting back in that direction, it's not really an issue. Like, as long as you allow enough time and enough slack to get your plastic down there. So that was, um, I, don't, I don't know what I was counting, but I left the bay alarm open the whole time until I just flicked it over. And I knew that the actual fish were sitting over that way a bit more. That's where all my marks were. You know, that just seems to be the spot that they like to hang out in. I'm just going to, I'll turn this camera a little bit so you can see me try and get him in the boat. Not a big fish. Oh, he's hooked pretty well in the top of the jaw there. We'll just lift him on board. I'm just get the lure out. So the little blue five inch crazy legs does the job i haven't used them once before but i've used that color in a jerk shad and caught fish and um all the crazy legs just seem to dominate to be honest they're always catching fish they're one of the best shapes and patterns you lose the tail quite often um but that's why you keep them moving don't let them sit still because the little ones will just eat them look at the beautiful colors on him just a just an absolute pretty little fish, isn't he? Look at the beautiful blues. Um, they're amazing little fish. Love catching these snappers. So much fun to catch in shallow water on plastics. Definitely the best way to target them in shallow water. We'll let him go. All right, guys, we got another one on. Another little snap. Um, you missed the start of it. I was just on the phone to my mother. She's got the little the Grom today. She looks after her for us on uh, Mondays and Tuesdays. It's um, good for Jasmine, I reckon. Good for our kid. Good for Nanny. It's her only grandkid, so she likes spending time with her. Allows me to come out here and do this. And um, lets my partner work. Got it pretty good, eh? guy's a little bit fiery so just got the rag out uh, yeah like I said the missus is working I'm out here fishing Jazzy's little kids at um, Nanny's place thanks Nanny legend big thumbs up to you um, yeah another little snap say 
and let him go. Meow. And if I come across a big kingfish, you know he's coming home for a feed because I've spent all summer chasing kingies and haven't got a legal one. Um, that's why I just thought I'll come back and do me little bit of bread and butter snapper fishing for you. Um, I know I'm pretty much guaranteed to get a few fish doing this. I won't say I always get fish, but 80% of the time, if I'm allowed to pick the day in the month, you know, if I pick the perfect day, right moon phase, right tides, um, you're going to get fish, hey? It's all about having that rising barometer, being on the right moon phase, and just having a nice day on the water, not too rough. It doesn't have to be perfectly calm, it can have a little bit of bump, and low light conditions are always good, it just allows those little bit smaller predators to get out and have a hunt around i think we're going to get another one here have a hunt around for some bait fish because they just they can't be seen the light's not penetrating the water due to the cloud and the ruffled surface also the little bit dirty water will bring them up the water column a bit as well they feel pretty comfortable in these on these shallow reefs on days like today um, the barometer is actually falling today, so it's not the perfect day, but moon phase is not really the right moon phase either. It's, um, we're three or four days after the full moon. I really like to fish three or four days either side of the new moon, so I'm sort of a week out of whack at the moment, but time's allowed it and conditions have allowed it, so I thought I'd come out here for a quick go, a bit of a plastics mission for you. Um, Yeah, it's definitely one of my favourite ways to target these snapper is this um, soft baiting for them. So much fun to catch in shallow water. You get a big fish on, uh, and I've been railed by some thumpers. Lost a heap of big ones, but caught, caught a fair few big ones too. It just With the ones that you land, it makes you wonder how big those ones are that get away. Nothing left of that plastic. We'll um, swap over what I might pull out. What am I going to pull out for you guys on this? Let's go with brown. We'll go with pumpkin seed. This is another really good colour, the pumpkin seed. Watermelon pearl is my favourite. Um, followed by the tiger lime. Followed by probably nuclear chicken. Followed by those blues. And then these are really good in the river systems i find when the water's a bit dirty this darker color just really gives you a good silhouette of your bait this gk is probably just a fraction big for them but just the hook's a little bit long but we'll give it a go haven't had one of these on today haven't had one of these on for a while actually but we got them there they're sitting out we'll give it a go See what I mean with the hook just being a little bit far, it's probably just that little bit far down the body of the fish, but still not far enough to stop the movement, the action of the lure. So we've actually hooked onto a fish straight away with the change of colour going to the pumpkin seed. Not sure what it is. I don't think it's a snapper. It's not. There's a bit of weight there, but it's not really fighting. Just coming up as dead weight, probably a, a rock cod. Oh, what have I got here? Oh, it's a little kingy. It's a little rat kingy. I think this thing's going to go nuts here in a minute once he realises he's going to come in the boat. He's only little. Just over here on the surface. Hopefully, you can pick him up on this other camera. There you go. Hey. Couldn't see some rats around, but definitely would want about four or five times that size. Be awesome. I'll get the net and get this one in. They definitely go hard for little fish, kingfish, that's for sure. That's what I like about the big ones. When you get one on, you, you know you're in for a battle. You're not going to just land that fish every time you get a metre plus kingy. 
I reckon I've lost more than I've landed when I've hooked them. It's all well and good finding them and get, once you find them, they're very easy to catch. It's very easy to get them to take a live bait or a lure or something, a jig. But um, finding them is the problem and then landing the big ones when you hook them. He's got that jig buried way down his mouth. Well, not way down, but definitely just inside of his mouth. So we'll work on getting that out. All right, we're on again. Don't know what this is gonna be. Might be another little king. Same thing, it's just coming in. Doesn't really care about being hooked. It's gonna be green as when it gets over here. If it is, it's gonna take off again. Ah, oh, no. Nah. Little Sergeant Baker. <laughs> Definitely no kingfish. We'll just flick him off and send him on his way. Don't think you really need to see another Sergeant Baker. Alright, we're on. Something small. One last fish to finish the session. I'll just have this, I'll finish this drift out and just drift through all this foam that you can see just off the south side of this point. Um, see what we can find. We've got another butcher's prick there. Oh, one last lucky cast. Eh? You've always got to have that last lucky cast. Oh, we're on. Got another one. That was supposed to be our lucky last cast. Don't know what we've caught. Another Sergeant Baker, I think. Got the wobbly boot on again. And here he is, another Sergeant Baker. We'll just shake him off and chuck him over the side. That's the pack of kingies there, little kingies. On the sander you can see in front of me. Oh, God. Just there. These are rat kings coming through under the boat. They're not big enough to take that big slimy. Um, that's one of those reasons that I like using big slimies and big yakkers. It just stops those rats from eating them. Um, you come across a school of rats and you've got little live baits. You're going to chew all those live baits up in no time. Oh, I'm kind of kicking myself for not coming around this corner a bit earlier. It looks heaps fishier than where I was. Um, having said that, I did get a few snaps. And you can't fish everywhere. Well, this is probably just about it. So I hope you've enjoyed the day. I hope you're enjoying flax fishing. And um, yeah, like and subscribe. Don't forget to throw in the comments. Um, you probably won't be able to comment on YouTube just because I've made it set for kids. So it stops people commenting on there. Um, I did have it set up to comment on. Because one of your mates has given me some stick. And I set it up for him to comment on. And he's had it now, it's been like that for four weeks. And not a single comment. So, Willie. Stuff you, mate. Love you, champ. You'll see that man in this boat some real soon, I reckon, eh? And um, hopefully he can play some beats for you.